going to be one of those nights. Just going to be one of those nights, folks. Feel like somebody's laughing in the face of adversity. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 6. And it came to pass, as, as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, not Philistines, Philistine. Somebody say one guy. That the women came out of all of the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tabrets, with joy, with joy, and with the instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul hath slain his thousands, but David his ten thousands. And it came to pass, after David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, women came out singing, dancing. You still got those things? With tabrets, with joy. Somebody say with joy and instruments of music. I'm preaching to you tonight the dawning or the dawn of joy. The dawn of joy. Help me, Jesus. I need your touch. I need Momo Sebo Makaye. I need God to be able to express things in the way that would be pleasing to you. To say that which would be of strength and help, blessing to your precious people. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Let me state, you can be seated. Let me state the obvious. You cannot buy joy in a bottle. You cannot buy joy in a pill. And it doesn't come through a thrill. Joy transcends the moment, and it doesn't disappear in the hot sunlight. It doesn't come as the result of a funny story or a fun time. It doesn't come just because of a full meal. Joy is not something that comes because of those things, but joy must be birthed. And the birthing process has got pain involved in it. <laughs> That's my foundation. Are you ready? I'm going to preach to you tonight about the dawn of joy. The first time that it ever appears in Scripture, oddly enough, it has already survived all of the period of Moses and the many, many centuries prior to that. It has survived all of the wanderings of the wilderness. It has survived the time in Egypt. It has survived all of those things. It has survived up until the first king of Israel before the word joy appears in the word of God. And so in, in this particular setting of what had happened, for 40 days, Israel had been living underneath a cloud. It was a cloud of shame, a cloud of intimidation, a cloud of failure, a cloud of a foregone conclusion. We're going to die. We're all going to be sent into slavery. We're going to be defeated. For 40 days, they had acquiesced to a spirit of defeat. 
They felt like their children were going to be enslaved and defeated. Their grandchildren, they saw a hopeless situation where no good result could come out of it. I like win-win. I like where everybody comes out smelling like a rose and does well. I hate it going into a situation where I know up front I'm about to lose. But Israel felt that way. The challenge had been given by the gigantic man by the name of Goliath. From a nine-foot-tall, 12-fingered giant, the challenge had been given. We're, we're living a day because of genetic uh, uh, foods and whatnot else and so much more available than there ever was. Our NBA players look like giants compared to some other generations. We went to Bolivia, and my sweet wife, which is to me just of an average height, she looked like a giant in Bolivia with all these little four-foot-something men. I'm not going to go any further. I'm just going to leave it right there, okay? But he would make these make it look like one of the NBA stars up against a child was what Goliath would have made it look like. Somebody standing five foot tall up beside Shaq O'Neal, whoever he is. But bear in mind, that's what Shaq would look like up against Goliath. There was a heavy pail of the spirit of disaster that was upon the fields that day. Twice a day, Goliath, the giant, would come out and stand on his side of the valley, and he would laugh, and he would mock, and he would scorn the Jews horribly, making it feel like that they had absolutely no hope. I may be preaching to somebody in this sanctuary tonight where the echoing calls and, and mocking of Satan has made you feel like you have no hope, that things aren't going to change, it's going to go from bad to worse, it ain't going to get any better. I rebuke negativity. I rebuke that spirit of hopelessness. Hallelujah. It was into that atmosphere that a man by the name of Jesse, David's dad, called, took him, his son, and sent him on a trip down there to the battle to check on his brothers and to find out how the battle was faring. This unknown boy, this boy that was most often set off to the side in the fields with the sheep, this boy from the town of Bethlehem comes in from out of the country. All of Israel may not, may have known what was going on, but David didn't have a clue. David was without Facebook. David was without the, multi, the, the media situation that was going on. He was out of the loop. And God sent somebody that was unaware of the situation and ignorant of the score that could face it without bias. Woo! Somebody shout hallelujah. Sometimes our problem is we've already accepted the party line. Sometimes our problem is we've already accepted what everybody else has said. And we need somebody to come in from the outside and say, no, I don't see it that way. But I see God operating in the midst of this. <laughs> Woo! David doesn't know that for over 80 years, times uh, this Goliath has got up there and he has mocked uh, and he has jeered uh, and he has blasphemed God. He doesn't know all that. All he knows is he's checking on his family. And in the midst of that, he sees this uncircumcised Philistine. Call him what he is. Don't call him by what you see. Call him by what he really is. And he saw that uncircumcised Philistine, and he realized that the battle had shifted because this idiot of a Philistine had brought God into the equation. Now, when you bring God into the equation, you're not fighting me, and you're not dealing with me, but you're dealing with God. 
Long story short, the giant dies at the hands of a fearless boy by the name of David. Somebody shout, the giant is dead. They could not have expected it. They sat there shocked and in awe when the giant fell down. And David reached into his own side, his hip and pulled out his own sword and cut Goliath's head off with that own, the sword that belonged to the giant. And it is in this setting that we see the first usage of the word joy. Joy came when the giant died. <laughs> Joy came when the giant fell and, and went to the ground. I'm preaching to somebody that has got some giants in your life that you don't know how you're going to face them and deal with them. But I'm telling you that if you'll get your eyes where they ought to be instead of on humanity and the possibilities of the flesh and you begin to get your eyes upon heaven and upon Jesus, I'm telling you, saints of God, God is going to kill the giant and joy is is coming out of it. Now let me just for a minute digress and tell you about another young man that was born in that same city named Bethlehem. He was born in that place and in ignominy, if you would, because his, it was in a stable that he was born. He was born in the most humble of all situations. Uh, and the scripture said in Luke chapter 2, For unto you, born this day in the city of David, is a Savior, Christ. The Lord, I'm telling you, out of the most humble situations, there came a Savior born out of that. David was the, was the first giant killer, and he was the great, great, great grandfather of the other one that was going to kill the greatest of all giants. Woo! Somebody say joy was born when the di giant died. Joy does not mean the absence of trouble. Joy does not mean that, that you're not going to face difficulty. Joy means regardless of the trouble. I've got the mighty Messiah that gives me peace and in my heart and in my mind and in my soul. I realize that I'm not doing this on my own, but God is with me. Ooh, anybody helping me preach tonight? Hallelujah. Wise men traveled over a thousand miles to get there. And when they got there to that little place, the Bible said they saw his star. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 10. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great Somebody shout it with me. They rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Why? Because in a world that was hopeless, in a world that was as dark as it could ever be, in a world of 400 years of silence and hypocrisy and religious things, in a world that was con controlled by the power of Rome, onto that set steps a man by the name of Jesus. And when Jesus comes to that place, I'm telling you, joy. Let me tell you what happened in the halls of hell. Hell knew the party was over. Hell knew that it was over. Hell knew that they didn't have a chance anymore. Woo! Somebody shout yes! <laughs> mm. David began by killing the giant. He started the first giant killing parade. But Jesus was the final act. The giant killer to kill all giants. Let me tell you what he ended up killing. He ended up killing death, hell, and the grave. Things that really matter. 
Joy. Somebody shout joy. joy. What is joy? Joy is consecra- concentrated peace. Joy is like the condensation on a cold glass of sweet tea on a hot summer day. It just breaks out. Get the atmosphere right, and it's just going to explode. It happens when the heat comes and faces the cold. It would have stolen the cold, but what has happened is the condensation pops out in order to help protect what is on the inside. Let me tell you what joy does. Joy will pop out in the most unseemly moments uh, because it is going to oppose uh, everything that is on the outside uh, to protect what is in the inside. Joy may make you laugh, but joy is bigger than laughter. Joy is more than all of that. Joy can often be seen as moisture running down the eyes. (laughs) Somebody help me preach in this place. Because when joy is born, hopelessness leaves the building. Hallelujah. Darkness is the absence of of light. Joy is the absence of hopelessness. And in that atmosphere, in that presence of a holy light, the stars spread across the Judean sky, but yet one thing stood out above the, all of the rest. The wise men saw a star. And when they saw that star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. What could have motivated the journey? What could have caused them to even lie when they were in the presence of Herod? What would make them keep doing that, keep looking when they had lost their way? I'll tell you what it was. It was the fact that there's coming a joy if I can just get into his presence. I've seen the star and I know the potential and I'm going to keep pressing until I'm in his presence. Let me tell you what hopelessness is trying to do. Hopelessness is trying to keep you from his presence. Buck up, Hulk. Now, I know it's just Aaron and, and, and Anthony back there. But right now, they're my destination. And I'm trying to get where they're at because joy is going to be there. But every time I do... There's this opposition that is coming against me. I mean, I'm like I'm playing football and trying to trying to get through it. But I'm telling you, there's coming a time if I'm persistent enough, I'm going to get around him and I'm going to get to where I need to go. I'm telling somebody here, don't give up, don't quit, don't get tired, but you hang in there. Hang in there. Joy is just on the other side of your birthing process. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Joy, somebody shout joy. Woo! Joy. I have, I have enjoyed the presence of joy pastoring Calvary Apostolic Church like I have never enjoyed in all of the years that I've pastored. Is everything perfect? No, not everything's perfect. But I'm going to tell you what happened. We faced a giant and we slew a giant. And joy, (laughs) joy is the reality of the result of killing the giant. I think you know I've been struggling not to use this verse in my whole message. Psalm 30 and verse 5. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. There's the daylight and the dawn of a brand new day. You hear me, devil? We have faced you, and we're no longer afraid of you. You are coming down, devil, and the church of the living God is going to have revival. 
joy. I said joy. Joy that the world can't give and the world can't take it away. I'm talking about joy that makes no sense. When you're in the middle of the storm and you still have joy because you know you're in the presence of Jesus. Woo! I'm telling somebody, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because there's something happening in the soul of this church. Yes! You ready? Joy came when the giant died. And if you haven't got joy, I would challenge you tonight. Face, face, confront your giant. You're going to find out you don't have to do it on your own, and you don't have to do it by yourself. But when you step into the position, God is going to fight your battles. He's not going to fight your battle as long as you're hiding. He's not going to fight your battle as long as you're cowering. But if you'll just get out there, face it and fight it, God is going to give you the victory. I would that somebody in this place would begin to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Come on and sing and praise Him in this sanctuary. Woo! I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. Oh, yeah! I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy.
all over me. The Lord calling, press on me, I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me, I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. See, I feel the joy of the Lord calling, press on me, I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me, I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. I've been loose, I've been set free. So pardon me a moment while well, I have a jubilee. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. I've been loose, I've been set free. So pardon me a moment while well, I have a jubilee. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, I have been loose, I've been set free. So pardon me a moment while well, I you believe I have been loose, I've been set free. So pardon me a moment while I have you believe. I have been loose, I've been set free. So pardon me a moment while I have you believe. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. Oh, I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. Oh, I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. Oh, I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me.
Oh, come on, let's sing it. I feel the joy of the Lord falling. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on, let's sing it. Yeah, I feel the joy of the Lord falling. I feel the joy. Come on, let's sing it one more time. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost over me. Oh, yes, I do. Hallelujah. Let's worship Him in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we love you in this place, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad to be in this place today. Amen. Amen. There's no other feeling. There's nowhere else you could find this joy but in the house of God. Amen. Amen. It's a privilege. Amen. Let's, let's clap our hands one more time to God. Amen. God, we love you, Jesus. God, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's continue to keep this throughout the week, and let's have a positive, great week. Amen. You're dismissed. Be friendly. Greet one another. Amen.